Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and I have another awesome little mini PC review for you guys today, the GMK Tech Knuckbox M5. And this little mini PC has a lot to offer in a very small package. So stick around, let's dive right into the specs of the GMK Tech Knuckbox M5. GMK Tech graciously sent over this M5 for me to take a look at it as a review unit. So let's dive right into the specs of the GMK Tech Knuckbox M5 Ryzen 7 based mini PC. Okay guys, so I have just the official product page pulled up on the GMK Tech website and just wanted to buzz through some of these specifications with you guys and just briefly cover what hardware is found in the m5 it's the ryzen 7 5700u processor that gives you eight cores 16 threads 1.8 gigahertz base frequency and then turbo boosting up to 4.3 gigahertz got a wide variety of display connectors to select from you've got the hdmi display port as well as usb c we've also got the radeon rx vega 8 graphics built in. It also comes with Windows 11 Pro and the reason I want to key in on that just for a moment is the Pro version of Windows client operating systems entitles you to Hyper-V. So this is a really nice feature that you get with this mini PC since you can use Windows 11 Pro with Hyper-V if you want to not really dedicate this hardware to a specific home server environment, but you want to use it as a workstation that doubles as your lab environment, Windows 11 Pro will entitle you to that Hyper-V functionality. Also, you get PCIe Gen 3, as well as really good cooling. It comes with 32 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz memory with a max of 64 gigs of memory, and then also Wi-Fi 6E. Now, that's kind of a cool thing to see that it supports 6e since i have seen a lot of these mini pcs that only support wi-fi 6. so let's go over a physical walkthrough of the unit on the front you've got the power button the microphone jack usb c two usb 3.x ports around the back you've got two two and a half gig ethernet adapter ports display port hdmi port two usb a ports as well as the power barrel jack. Now on the top, I have removed in this video already the top plate and it's toolless. Uh, so you just literally get a fingernail around one edge and just pop it out. Then it reveals the internal plate that you see me removing now. Uh, to remove that plate, there is one screw in each corner for total that you have to remove and then that releases the internal plate to gain access to the DIMM slots as well as the M.2 2280 slot. So this just pops out after the screws are removed and you can see the RAM as well as the M.2 slot. So the GMK Tech Nutbox M5 is a great little mini PC that I think packs a lot of punch due to the Ryzen 7 5700U processor. Now, this processor is a bit dated. It is not a new Ryzen processor. However, the 5700U is a low power laptop processor and that makes it ideal, especially in a home lab scenario where you are going to run this little mini PC 24 by seven by 365. The lower the power requirements in that scenario, the better. And this is a fantastic efficient CPU for that purpose and it packs a punch. It's not anemic by any stretch. Uh, this processor is an eight core processor with hyper threading. So with the logical cores, if you load this thing up with a modern hypervisor, VMware ESXi, Proxmox, XEPNG, you're going to be able to take advantage of the hyper threading that's available in this mini PC. Now, one of the other things that I really like about the Ryzen processors is they are a uniform processor. If you saw my recent review of the Minis Forum MS01, it has a very modern set of options for Core i9 processors. The top of the line being the 
i9-13900H processor. And while this processor is extremely powerful, it is an Intel hybrid CPU, meaning it has the performance cores as well as the efficient cores. It has a lot of performance in that package. However, it creates some challenges when we think about virtualization, thinking about having those uniform cores that hypervisors really like to see when you are assigning and scheduling workloads to those individual cores of that CPU package. So this 5700U processor, even though it's a little bit dated, it's very efficient, it's a uniform processor, and it has 16 logical cores. Now, one of the other things I really like about the M5, even though it's a Ryzen-based mini PC, it also has two Intel 2.5 gig network adapters. That is key because it gives you the option to run VMware ESXi without having to finagle with USB adapters and worry about drivers and those types of things. I know what many of you are saying, forget VMware, I'm totally Proxmox XCPNG, and I get it. I know with the Broadcom acquisition, it's not looking that great for VMware. However, I'll say this, if you're like me, if you're looking at home lab hardware, I like to see hardware that gives me me options. Now, a year from now, two years from now, will things totally change on the front of VMware ESXi? Who knows? But in my opinion, having the option to still install VMware ESXi, as well as all those Linux hypervisors that we know and love that are awesome, like Proxmox, XCPNG, and others, I think that just makes the mini PC a better deal. That's why I even really bothered to bring that point up. And I did for this review, I did install VMware ESXi. So let's jump right into the host client, as well as the vSphere client to see what you see inside of VMware in terms of the hardware and a few things to note. So I'm logged into the host client on the GMK Tech Knuckbox M5, and I just wanted to show you guys how the hardware is recognized inside of ESXi. No surprises here. Uh, you see the uh, CPU is recognized as the eight CPUs times AMD Ryzen 7 5700U with Radeon graphics. If we expand that, we see the 16 logical processors and then also we see the one socket, eight cores per socket. Hyperthreading is yes, and it is enabled. And of course our memory with just a little bit of overhead, we've got 32 gigs of memory, 28 gigs, that is usable to our virtual machines. I was able to easily run 20 Ubuntu server 2204 LTS virtual machines. And I believe I configured these with four gigs of memory. So obviously we're over provisioned on the memory and I was playing around with some CPU testing. So I've got one VM that's configured with 16 CPUs, but on the virtual machine side, I was able to very easily run those 20 virtual machines without issue. And if I go back to the host metrics, you can see that we are just simply baseline with those virtual machines. And that makes sense. They are just sitting there idle. Uh, no work is happening on those virtual machines. And this is a perfect scenario, I think, perfect hardware for something like a home lab since it is so power efficient. And a lot of those workloads that you will run in a home lab environment are going to be in an idle state. So you want something that's very efficient yet powerful enough to run those workloads. And I think that this 5700U processor is all the cores that you most likely will need, as well as the uniform cores of those Ryzen chips. I installed a couple of CPU stress utilities inside of a guest virtual machine running in Ubuntu Server 2204 LTS, and I installed these utilities just to create some synthetic CPU work inside the guest virtual machine, and I was able to max out the processor. And I want to show you guys just how efficient this processor really is and what type of power consumption we're really looking at if the CPU is at a maximum of 100% CPU usage. In this first screenshot, you're going to see the watt meter at 11.5 watts. And this is what I recorded with the GMK Tech M5 after boot sitting there idle with no workloads. Next, we have the M5 at 100% CPU usage. And I did this by powering on 20 virtual machines 
at the same time. So 30.6 watts. And really that's incredible efficiency when we're talking about 100% CPU usage. What is the final analysis of this as a home lab server? Well, I think this mini PC certainly gets my stamp of approval running it as a home server. It gives you all the hardware needed to load all of the variety of hypervisors that I think most are going to want to run in a home lab. VMware, Proxmox, XCPNG, KVM, even Nutanix. It gives you that wide range of supported hardware needed to install all of that wide base of hypervisors in your home lab. One of the downsides with this unit, I think, is the storage. You only get one NVMe slot and you also are limited to DDR4 current memory maximums with the SODIMM chips that we get in many PCs. So keep those things in mind. It's a bit limited with the storage side of things as well as memory. Well, once again, guys, I'm Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the VHC forums, hit me up there if you want some detailed help working through a home lab challenge that you are working through at this time. Stay safe out there, guys, and I will see you in the next video.